Welcome again to our show and thank you for watching. This year we're dedicating our show to Randall Sherman. Uh, all the 2015 shows are dedicated to Randall Sherman, a blessed memory, the founder of the Illinois Committee for Honest Government. I have Don Ritchie on my left and I have Mr. Davis on my right, Scott Davis, and he is a candidate for Alderman in the 44th Ward. Thank you for being on our show. Frank, thanks for having me. And Don, thank you for co-hosting. Oh, thank you for having me on. I want to thank everybody who makes the show possible, uh, Tony and Pops and, of course, Bill Godomsky and everyone else here that makes the show possible, Freddie and everyone else and all the staff at Can TV. But I also want to thank our viewing audience because it's you who makes our show possible and makes it important and makes our message get out. Now, let's get right into the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Scott. Yeah, my name's Scott Davis. Uh, I live at 1439 West Addison, and I'm running for alderman in the 44th Giving board. out his actual address. <laughs> well, it's on the ballot, I know. So I guess if people want to kind of stalk you at your house, you got to be careful. Uh, I, you know, people should know where I live in the neighborhood. Um, I, uh, yeah, and I'm running for alderman so in the 44th board. So what's that address one more time? <laughs> West Addison. Um, I am uh, so right by Wrigley Field. Right by Wrigley Field, about four blocks away from Wrigley now, Field. Now, if he said 1060 West Addison, like they did <laughs> at the Blues Brothers, I think maybe he wasn't telling the truth. But um, that's what they gave on their driver's license. That's the Blues right, Brothers, the right. Blues Brothers. Yeah, that's correct. So, but right by Wrigley Field. Mm -hmm. And I'm running to uh, because I want to ban the red light cameras and the speed cameras in Chicago. Um, I want to hold the line on this property tax that they're floating. Um, I want to audit CPS, and I'm for an elected school board. And oh uh, man, this guy is this guy is good. I mean, all good can is the, the red light cameras suck. They're terrible. Yes. The red light cameras hurt people who are either late to work and are trying to get somewhere on time, or a single mom got to pick up their kids at a certain time or whatever, and they're they're regressive, they're punitive. But I'll tell you what else. We don't have long enough yellow lights. That's true, Frank. That's the key thing to that's, safety. That's absolutely true. And actually, in my ward is one of the highest grossing revenue red light cameras at Belmont and Lakeshore Drive. Uh, and if you go to my website, scottdavis44.com, you'll find a video there where I've timed, actually, we've done an analysis and timed the, uh, the frame rate of the yellow light and timed it at 2.83 seconds. So the, uh, the city and, and the policy of issuring tickets with shortened, li shortened yellow lights or short yellow lights um, I feel like is it's unfair, unsafe, and really unconstitutional. Right, it's unsafe. Right, I agree with all those things. That's, that's excellent. So let's tell us, one, how did you get involved in fighting red light cameras? And then into a little more detail, why mm -hmm. are you against them? Um, well, I'm, I'm a liberty activist. Um, after the financial crisis, I got in, involved in uh, a well, group what financial called, crisis? Were the 2008 to? financial crisis. I got involved in um, a group called Campaign for Liberty, which did audit the Fed um, activism, an audit of forensic or an audit of the Federal Reserve and the monetary God. policy. And um, you know that was a national effort. And actually, audit the Fed is coming up again soon in the Congress in this next Congress. And you know, I think also we'll there's two problems. I don't want to digress because mm -hmm. these are local issues. I know Don has a number of questions too, but two things on that. One, the TARP, Toxic Assets Relief Program of 2008, was the biggest con job in yes. the history of mankind. Biggest totally agree with transfer that. of money. Yeah. And number two, the Fed, both the Bush two and Obama, it's been a revolving door in their administrations at Treasury or their Fed appointments for Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is basically running America and they're a monopoly. And it, I mean, it's shocking to me that we're allowing it. Well, um, yeah, I, I really felt that that um, the so so called quantitative easing or, or printing money to you know bail our bail us out of our problems was was going to hurt people, hurt working people um, through the inflation tax, and that's really how I became an activist. But um, at that time, we were looking for a local issue, and, and red light cameras was beginning to happen around 2009, 2010, and it was. It, it expanded um, to this this network of over 350 at the at the time maybe 360 cameras in the city, and uh, people were starting to feel it. Uh, it was deploying 55, 56, 60 million, 68 million, 69 million dollars a year over the past few years, and uh, we really felt like well this is a great personal liberty issue. This is an unfair tax on on people on drivers, and um, you know we just we just. It was something that I wanted to get involved with. Then last year, I got in. Uh, I actually got introduced. Actually, two years ago in October, I got introduced to a group um, from the South Side called the Citizens to Abolish Red Light Cameras, and we sort of joined forces. And um, 
took a different tack this year because we knew it was an election year. And we wanted to let um, the, the citizens of Chicago really know who their elected officials were who voted for this. People like Tom Tunney, who consistently voted for red light cameras and speed cameras in Chicago. Um, so that's, that's how I got Tunney involved was elected in, in 2003. Activism. Yes. Did mm -hmm. he vote for the parking meter deal? He did. He voted for the parking meter deal. Another bad deal. He voted for the red light cameras and the speed cameras. And, and he really votes pretty consistently with, um, with uh, the administration on, on whatever, um, whatever they require. So yeah, I got a ticket for going six miles over the limit on a speed camera. Yeah, we actually have a speed camera. The one speed camera we do have in our ward is uh, on Irving Park Road, and it's tucked between two cemeteries. Um, just east of Clark, um, and the um, the way they uh, sort of validate that is there's a small dog park over by the L tracks um, on Irving Park Road, closer to Sheridan, um, and so we just feel like this is an, an egregious policy, um, and and it's tricking people in, into tickets, and and we don't and we sh we shouldn't have it in Chicago. Well, the other problem is is then the traffic code, you get a moving violation, which is taking red light or speeding as a moving violation. Mm -hmm. But let's say I have a car or, or all the cars in my family are registered to me. Mm -hmm. So my son takes the car, my wife takes a car, whatever. We don't get a right to ever have any personal responsibility. So, and then you go to a superior court, you're not going to an actual court where you can argue. Right. You're going to a kangaroo you're going court. To administrative law. Administrative right. law court. Mm -hmm. and, and you basically have no redress on these issues. It's very difficult, um, and we actually haven't found a way to be a speed camera ticket at this time, but um, you, there are, you're raising like important constitutional issues. You don't have a right to face your accuser. Um, you know, um, for, on the red light camera tickets, you know, we feel that um, there are inconsistent judgments between the administrative law judges. And there's actually a new court case going uh, to Cook County right now um, where uh, the same individual received two um, red light camera tickets. He got out of one for a short yellow. He did not get out of the other for the short yellow. So that is an arbitrary enforcement of the law, we feel. Um, and uh, we need to challenge that, and, and this gentleman has actually taken it to court to mm -hmm. challenge it. Now, um, now, I think as as Frank mentioned earlier, I'm with Citizens Taking Action, mm -hmm. CTA, which mm -hmm. is uh, that's a citizens group that campaigns for the protection and improvement of public transportation here in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and now since you're running for alderman. Uh, what do you see as the most serious public transportation issues in in your ward, in the 44th ward? And and as an alderman, what would you what would you do to try to um, to try to improve public transportation or to keep it from getting worse? Um, I actually think public transportation, particularly in my mm -hmm. ward, is is we're pretty well served. We have the mm -hmm. Brown Line um, that has several stops in my ward. Mm -hmm. um, you know, several you know, the um, the uh, the the bus that will go directly down to the mm -hmm. loop on the, over by the lake okay. shore. Um, the one the one issue that I'm not in support of that's been brought up is um, this um, Ashland bus rabbit transit. I am not in favor of that. It would be taking out two lanes out of a four lane road on Ashland mm -hmm. to create um, uh, a, a bus rapid transit system, and I, I'm opposed to that mm -hmm. um, because I just think that it would um, create an unnecessary um, uh, traffic situation for for everyday drivers. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because our group opposes the BRT as well. Uh, what about there is another issue which I didn't mention mm -hmm. before, and that is that there have been serious cutbacks in in CTA bus transportation. For example, uh, the, there used to be a Lincoln Avenue bus which went the whole length of Lincoln Avenue mm -hmm. uh, from, from Lincoln Park all the way up to, I believe, to Lincolnwood. And, and it doesn't, they don't have a bus that does that anymore. Uh, now, now the bus only goes, it only goes part way up Lincoln Avenue and then, there, and then there's an area that isn't served by any bus on Lincoln mm -hmm. and then there's another bus way further up on the far north side but out of your area. Yeah, I so mean, would it's you, not, a, would, not an issue that I'm to really familiar with because mm -hmm. it's not really in our ward but um, uh, you know, I I, yeah, I can't really comment on, on the specifics of mm -hmm. that one. What about the Ventra card? Ventra, um, you know, it's not, it's not something I'm comfortable with. Um, it's a company from Iowa mm -hmm. um, that is 
um, managing the, you know, your, your bus fare. And, and, and there are some conveniences to it, but um, I didn't really uh, feel like it was all that necessary, like the old system was, was really working mm -hmm. um, that bad to, to have well, what this, I'm concerned yeah. is this how, major replacement. Why it's a credit card or a debit card when people don't want it, the fees they're charging, yeah. right. how some people get charged like $50 randomly because of some electronically, you know, electronic tra uh, transmission on your your credit or debit, I got to get one of those wallets that protects you from those uh, waves. Yeah, right. And then some people don't get charged at all. I didn't really feel like it was a necessary uh, uh, improvement. I thought the rollout was terrible mm -hmm. um, and actually had trouble um, personally purchasing a venture card and then getting mm -hmm. it to work. Um, yeah, I, I, I was a fan of the old system and, and um, I just didn't really think that the, that the venture card was necessary. I was a fan of the tokens. Oh. <laughs> I'm a fan of the tokens, but at any rate. So, and you have a lot of people in your ward that you do use public transportation. Mm -hmm. You have some very large um, CTA it's train It's really popular. Stops, yeah, you know, yeah. Especially train, I think, to mm -hmm. get downtown if they work downtown. Um, I take it every day, personally. Right. And, and um, You have a couple, I believe. Mm -hmm. You have one on Sheridan. Brown Line uh, at... Uh, S starts sort of on the western part of the world. Well, I guess Pauline is just out of the ward, but yeah, we have the Southport Brown Line stop and the Belmont Brown Line stop goes all the way down to Diversity. A couple other stops in there. And then, yeah, the Red Line um, at uh, Addison and of course at Belmont as well. Right, so public transportation is an important issue. Um, mm -hmm. In your ward, I would believe. I think, we're, I think we're well served right now. Um, there is one issue that uh, I want to bring up on public transportation is that, and that is the Brown Line flyover, yes. which is um, a proposal to uh, build sort of a, a, an up, a, a ramp that would mm -hmm. um, cross over for the northbound Brown Line mm -hmm. um, and so that the Red Line could pass underneath this train yes. bridge. Um, this would be a multi-million dollar project for the CTA and um, it would uh, mean the possibly eminent domain of up to 15 uh, uh, private properties. Yes. I'm against that, um, that, uh, that project and that proposal because I take, like I said, I take the brown line every day. I've never had to wait longer than mm -hmm. 30 seconds for the red line to, to, uh, to clear and so I just don't see doing a cost-benefit analysis, I just don't see a huge benefit to that project in particular, mm -hmm. and I'm against it. Yeah, so I would totally agree with you about that. We oppose the, at CTA, we oppose the Belmont flyover, and we think the money sh would be better spent on uh, bringing back the bus service that we had before, because uh, the, the trains will get you, you know, they'll get you only so far, but the, the, the buses are needed to, to enable people to get to the places that aren't served by the trains. Mm -hmm. And they've, they've taken away so much of the bus service now. Have they explained, it's a serious problem. I'm not, again, I'm not that familiar with it, but have they explained, was it a cost-benefit uh, decision? They, they said they were doing that to save money, mm -hmm. yes. But then they're spending money on, on things that, are, that, as you just pointed out, are not necessary, uh, such as the Belmont flyover. Right. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, don't want, I want common sense I, I, I want to make common sense decisions on, mm -hmm. on issues like that. So, yeah, that's why I'm running for office. And, and um, However, on public transportation, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily always a cost-benefit analysis. Right. It, there you has to be to a sense the of community. the public good. Mm -hmm. good. I mean, that's one mm -hmm. of the few yes. services where you should be serving the public good and have a sense that maybe not everything's going to make money in and of itself. Um, but let me ask you this. How are you going to reduce property taxes? I have had some uh, proposals to reduce pro property taxes because areas like where you live in, the Wrigleyville area, Lakeview area, they've seen property taxes since Mayor Daley got in where you're talking about 150, 300%. Uh, I think, think of some places like 500% increases mm -hmm. in valuation. Now, people, these politicians would say, oh, well, we didn't actually uh, vote on a raising property tax levy. Well, you didn't have to because you tripled or quadrupled your budget. Right. Mm -hmm. you're, instead of spending $1 billion, you're now spending $5 billion. I'm just giving a theoretical example. Sure. And you're going to have to spend the $5 billion. So now your, uh, 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 your assessments go up, your valuations go up. Now, when they go up initially, you're happy because, oh, my property worth, was worth more money. But as you stated, in t 2008, when everything crashed, you have high property taxes and low values, yeah. even in a place like Wrigleyville or Lakeview. Yeah, happens. absolutely, and I'm a, I'm a homeowner, I'm a condo owner. I bought at the end of 2007, which may have been Ouch. the worst time to buy a, uh, a condominium in the United States of America. 
Um, but um, yeah, I, I mean, exactly what you're saying. I don't know if I can uh, justify cutting property taxes at r right now, but I certainly do not want to raise property taxes. Um, and I think that if Tom Tunney is elected, he is going to raise property taxes mm -hmm. in 2015. Um, because but there's two ways they raise it. One, by spending, mm -hmm. and two, by a actual property tax levy. I think the, the first one is a, a secret. It's a trick. Tr as your property value raises, it raises right. you're paying more. Um, you will pay more as your property. But my, val my value, I'm not back above water after 2007. I mean, my, my value is still, is, still, is still declined from there. And I just think that raising property taxes right now, even in my community, is going to be um, detrimental to everyday people that are, that are trying to make, you know, trying to make their bills. Trying so to what are alternative payments. revenue sources that you could bring yeah. ideas for part or vote on if you were in the city council? I, uh, I am in favor of the elimination of the tax increment financing system. Um, over 30% right, of the I city. think I found the perfect candidate here. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I think I... We got not a trifecta, but uh, and we don't have TIF we, in the forty fourth ward. We we but you have, do have one, TIFs in neighboring we, wards. We do have neighbor in neighboring wards, um, but uh, over thirty percent of the city is covered in TIF. This, if you're not familiar with it, this is um, sort of a um, uh, an investment uh, in in the local community um, that I don't agree with because over seventy percent of this, according to Tom Tresser in the Civic Lab. Um, goes to private companies. And Tom Tresser does some very good research and work, I think. Yeah, and... and I work with him in opposing the coming of the Olympics here, and he's done a lot of stuff on the TIFs, sort of like Ben Jarofsky at The Reader's done, too. Yeah, and, and I think there's a perception that, um, oh, you know, the city might be broke, you know, and, and we're really, we're on a, we're on, you know, holding on by a thread here, but uh, according to Tom, at the beginning of, of 2014, there was $1.7 billion sitting in the TIF funds. Um, and there's over $450 million a year that's redirected into the, into the tax increment, increment financing system. So I would prefer that my property taxes go to pay for schools, parks, city services, and public safety, uh, and not to corporate welfare. I agree with you, and that's, I, I, I can't tell you how many good issues you've really had here. Um, also, some, some proposals have said to take the money out of the TIFs and you have a portion back to property tax payers, give a portion to law enforcement, a portion to education, and perhaps just an important portion, and, and the, my next question is to pay off pension debt, mm -hmm. because the pension debt increases your your spending because yes. you're paying on the interest on the on the, on the bonds and mm -hmm. and and on the uh, on the on the balloon payments that we're getting. And I, I really think you're bringing up the, the you know a really important point that needs to happen as soon as possible, and that is to redirect. Well, take the existing TIF funds that are not committed that we can legally take and use those to shore up the pensions, the public sector pensions, because the city has made decisions in the past not to make the payments. And we have a mandated payment, I think, with respect to, um, to, to the police and fire uh, coming up in the next year or so of, uh, I believe, $600 million. And, and we have to come up with that money somewhere. And I believe that Tom Tunney is reelected. He's going to vote to raise your property taxes. They've already, vote, they've already floated a proposal to raise property taxes five times over the next five years. They didn't do that because they're going into an election year. But that, to me, um, I've gotten survey from uh, a certain super PAC in the city here that uh, specifically asked if uh, I would be in favor of raising property taxes. No, it's not a super PAC associated with Rob <laughs> the mayor, is I it? Don't, I'm not sure, but um, okay. it, it, hmm. I'm not sure who they were associated with. But I mean, I think that uh, it's definitely um, being telegraphed that there is a property tax coming in 2015 um, if we elect, if we re-elect people like Tom Tunney. Okay. Well, I have a question, Jim. Um, Scott, sorry, uh, uh, Scott. The, if you are elected alderman, would you um, would you campaign to get the uh, venture contract ended? I would have to look into it. I mean, um, it's not the, it's not the core of my campaign. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't like um, sort of giving you know uh, uh, selling our public assets, if you will, mm -hmm. to private companies who you know are from another state, don't even pay yeah. state income tax. So. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I would look into it, but I don't know enough. Okay. Uh, it's it's in place now. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to inconvenience people, but uh, it's not a, a program that I'm really comfortable with. Oh. 
would you would you support uh, a movement to end the venture contract if there was a movement to end it? If there was, I, I would certainly look into that, yes, because I'm really not in favor of, of uh, outsourcing, you know, these kind of services to bank interests. So. Oh, okay. Now let's talk again about revenues. Some things that have been on the table from other candidates for mayor, for example, have been a tax on derivatives or a financial transaction tax that would affect like the Chicago Board of Trade, mm -hmm. the Chicago Board of Options, the Merck. I'm not sure if it would affect anyone else in the financial industry of Chicago, but I think it's more not on direct trades, but on the derivatives or a small percentage on each trade that you find at these kinds of institutions. I'm not an expert on it. And I know it's been floated before. And I know the fear was, well, they'd get up and they'd leave. Yeah, move to Texas, possibly. Or Perhaps, some other but a lot, of a lot of the people live here and they prefer to live here in a downtown with nightlife and sort of like your ward, a lot yeah. of restaurants and a lot of uh, nightlife. You have a lot of nightlife in your mm -hmm. ward, reggae bars and entertainment sports ward, bars, yeah. entertainment. Mm -hmm. You're an entertainment ward. And so, um, and my, my research has indicated that a lot of other, most other countries that have these kind of entities, you know, futures and options, that they do have taxes. So would you support a financial transaction tax on these um, institutions we have I, in Chicago? I'm not in favor of a financial tra tra transaction tax. I, I actually, my first job as a kid coming out of, um, as a freshman in college was as a runner at the Mercantile Exchange. Um, it's very exciting. Um, they don't have op open outcry. The, the industry's changed a lot um, since I since I worked there in the early '90s. But um, you know, I'm not in favor of a of, of a, a transaction tax on the financial industry because I think it's an important industry, as you said, and we need to and we need to keep it here. Now you said though, when you worked there, you had open outcry, so you like mm -hmm. the movies. You know, I was like, a runner, I, yeah. Like trading places, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. you're raising your hand, and you have the little piece of paper, so that they no longer do that, and most of the trades are on computer the restaurants, the barbers that used to be in these institutions are getting no benefit. So the idea of them leaving is not as powerful for the area. You mm -hmm. don't see a dynamic Jackson or Van Buren Avenue. If, I'm sorry, your question was that. Well, you, well, now that it's changed to the computers, what's the real benefit for the local economy? You don't see a dynamic Jackson or Van Buren Avenue. I think the industry is still located here though. And, and um, uh, the, um, yeah, the the uh, Chicago Board of Options Exchange, the uh, the Mercantile Exchange, the um, I'm trying to think of the other one, the, uh, the stock, the Chicago. There's a Chicago Stock Exchange, I believe, here too. Um, you know, the the, his, the history of those exchanges is here in Chicago, and I think that um, we need to, we need to maintain that. And so I'm not in favor of a trans, uh, financial. What transaction about a commuter tax? tax? A commuter tax. So is this? Um, this I know is that Commissioner Alderman uh, Fioretti and, and mm -hmm. Commissioner. Ch Garcia I have have floated these ideas or support these ideas. So I'm assuming, I don't know how you would enforce it, but people come into the city would have some kind of fee or tax on them. I, I don't know how we would enforce that either, and I, I'm, I can't get behind that kind of tax increase. I really want to go after the tax increment financing because I think it's a direct link to corporate welfare and it's a redirection of my property taxes where I don't want it to go, and that and that is into private companies and political pet projects. So What about a casino? A casino, um, you, you know, I, um, I am, I guess I'm okay with the casino. I am not okay with the city owning the casino. So I would be okay if it was a, you know, like a, like a Rivers Casino up in, in, the, in the suburbs um, and with, with state regulation, but I'm not comfortable with the city owning. I just don't think that's the proper role of government to own a casino. And, and I, now it's worked on American Indian tribes because the issue is obviously with rivers and these other mm -hmm. casinos, uh, Aurora, Elgin, mm -hmm. Joliet. If you go to Aurora, Elgin, or Joliet, they look like bu burned out cities after the casino because nobody goes. Didn't to the really local work, business. did it? Right. Uh, it didn't work for mm -hmm. the local economic stimulus. But so, but there's other ways I think you could get around that. But the second issue is we don't really get that much money back in the state. We've made a bunch of million multimillionaires on who have the casino licenses. Mm -hmm. So the city owning it but having somebody else manage it. I'm, you don't like it. I'm still? just not comfortable. What with about that. a bigger cut of the tax uh, percentage? Uh, I don't think that a casino is going to balance our budget and and get us out of the, our, our fiscal problems. So while I, I'm okay locating a casino here so that we prevent revenue from going to Indiana or, or you know western suburbs, um, 
I'm just not comfortable with the city owning a casino and uh, and and trying to balance our budget off of that. I can, you know, I, I'm in favor of tax revenue, but um, not as a as a primary uh, source of revenue because of what you just said, Frank. I, it it didn't work uh, to revitalize Joliet or, or Aurora or some of those other cities, really. Um, so I don't think it be it can be relied on as a um, as a uh, a tax uh, as a as a as a revenue stream a consistent revenue stream. Atlantic City is bankrupt too. <laughs> Here's another great <laughs> yeah. example. Okay, um, this is um, I think Frank asked this question before, but I was wondering it, since you um, what would what would you do to uh, to raise revenue for the city of Chicago? Well, I, I'm more concerned maybe with our spending and mm -hmm. very concerned about the pension, uh, the, the public sector pensions. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I want to look at the, the spending side first and, mm -hmm. and um, primarily... And I'm sure you could cut a lot of spending in yeah, the city of Chicago. I, but I, I you don't support a forensic audit? I, I I would support a forensic audit, and I'm I'm calling for a forensic audit of CPS because I just uh, I'm troubled by the um, by the um, uh, the lending and and so, some of the sort of uh, interest rate futures and those things that mm -hmm. um, may have cost. Well, Goldman Sachs made like 18 million. Yeah, and it cost credit. CPS nine percent interest if they blew the if they blew the auction. So I mean, that right there. Um, also, you know, there's there's been um, some stories just recently of over eight hundred thousand uh, dollars being mm -hmm. embezzled from from CPS. Mm -hmm. I want to find out who bought those cappuccino machines a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that if we want to hold, if we want an elected school board and we want to have a mechanism for holding people accountable, we also need transparency, um, which will give us um, the the information to hold our uh, our elected school board accountable and hold and hold the public schools accountable because. Um, y you know, people were very upset about school closing. People are very upset in my neighborhood about schools being, uh, uh, having their budgets reduced. And um, so I would favor forensic audit of, yes, I, I could get behind a forensic audit of the city. That might be um, a, a little expensive to do, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, one of my platforms is to audit CPS. Um, because I, I don't, I want my property taxes going to pay for good schools. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I I think we need some fiscal uh, um, discipline in the school district. So mm -hmm. now we're almost out of time, mm -hmm. but if you support an abolishing of red light cameras like I do and Scott Davis, candidate for alderman in the 44th ward does, and I think Don Ritchie does too, and if you support abolishing, I think of the speeding cameras, and you want to hold the lines on property taxes, and you believe in an elected school board. Well, then support them. If you have any questions or criticisms or comments, where can we contact you? Uh, uh, website, email. Yeah, my website is scottdavis44.com, um, and you can contact me by email or telephone there. Okay. And thank you for watching. Uh, uh, would you have a physical campaign office? I do not. I'm, okay. uh, I'm not a yet. virtual campaign office. Virtual campaign. So look on the website. Thank you for watching. Goodbye, and God bless.